welcome back to another episode of Happiness Matters, the show with your host, um, Mo the Service Dog, who is, because we're doing Zoom, he's out in the hallway sleeping for now, and me, Beanie Man. And I have a great guest on the show today. It's Leslie, and you pronounce your last name Goth? Yes. Okay. Goth, yes. I like Goth. <laughs> Very anyway, dark. Different story. <laughs> <laughs> Very dark and mysterious. Like, I know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so Leslie and I know we did not mean networking. We got connected through a mutual friend, Gary Barnes, which Gary, love you. Yay, love you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you hail from Broomfield, Colorado. Broomfield, Colorado, yes. Right. And you are a psychologist. Mm-hmm. And you got there because of your own stuff. Sure. Absolutely. And, and, and again, you know, you can share it, not share it. That's okay. We'll just, we'll just see where this goes. We'll just see where this Sounds goes. Sounds good. So, because I said, we just good. met. So, so Leslie and I just met about what, 10 minutes before we came on live here. And, yeah. um, this just clicked. It's just uh-huh. that connection. It's like, you're my soul sister. You know, we were connected. <laughs> we were connected. It's like, ah. <laughs> I love this. Great. So why don't you tell That's us great. a little bit about you? Like, you know, are you a native? Okay. Are you import? I, I grew up in Connecticut and went to uh, college upstate New York and then moved out to California to go to grad school and uh, came to Colorado because my ex-husband grew up here and his okay. whole family was here and we wanted to raise our children close to family. And so so that's what brought me here, and I'm going to, I plan on staying here. I love it. I love Colorado so much. Well, it's not to I mean, love. We it's, have, what, I've lived 300 in, and some days of sunshine a year? Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's got all four seasons, you know, I, one day. I just love it. I just love it so much. I mean, there's lots of other places that I love too, but this has been, I think, the favorite, my favorite so far. Nice. So set, set up shop here in Colorado, and you know, just been, been going strong ever since. So no complaints. You know yeah. what? Complaining doesn't do anything anyway. Nah, it's just it not unless you're going to do something. Miserable yeah. spot. Right. Exactly. You exactly. Know, and, oh, who wants to be there? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like but now I have more freedom because both my kids are, you know, they're done with high school. They're doing their own thing. And so I'm kind of now taking my business and everything I've learned over the last 15 years into a broader forum, like being able to talk to you, getting, getting in front of more people, being able to teach and speak and, and do the things that share the passion that I have now with more than just one person at a time who gets to sit on my couch. So I love that. I totally get that. That's why I was like, you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. I like coaching, but my passion really is the public speaking because we can reach more people faster. Exactly. Same exactly. message, mm-hmm. you know, we just reach more people faster and that way mm-hmm. the happy spreads, spreads faster. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's right. all about the happy. <laughs> <laughs> for you, it's all about the happy. For me, it's all about the healing, which then leads to the happy. <laughs> well, it's yeah. all connected. Absolutely. It's like you cannot right. have one without the other. Right. You know, so, I mean, it's, exactly. and it's a yeah. process. And I'm, I'm grateful sure. there's, there's people like you out there, mm, you know, who went you. through yeah. their own stuff yeah. to get where they are today. Yeah, exactly. You know, because to me, those are the most effective people. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, hey, it's like, what have you been through? I mean, I, I meet so many people. It's like, oh, I'm a life coach too. I'm like, okay, tell me a little bit. And then I ask questions and they never really experienced anything to really qualify mm. them. Yeah. You know, to, to, to help people with what they want to help them with. Sure. You know, I mean, they may have. And that like, happens in my field too. Right. I mean, it happens everywhere, but I mean, they write everywhere. Books, yeah. other people's stories, you know, yeah. to me, yeah. a lot of times I feel like unless the person has been through mm-hmm. and come out of it, mm-hmm. I don't know. I was like, Hmm, I'm not sure I would hire that person. That's just me. And it's, and it's hard to help someone walk through something that you haven't walked through. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's a, an understanding between, at least in, in both of our fields, you know, between like someone who sits down with me and knows that I get it versus thinking, I don't understand. I don't right. get it. Right. 
and, and being able to really have that, not just compassion, but the, the true depth of the empathy that mm -hmm. I do get it. Well, um, it's not just that, but it's yeah. like, I find when people understand, it's like, oh my gosh, she's been through what I've gone through. She really does understand. They open up more That's and right. they open up in a whole different way. Yeah, because we all deeper, need to which, feel which safe. Gives more healing. Yes. Right. We need to feel safe because it's such a vulnerable process. Right. And it's scary. Yeah. It's a scary process because it's like opening up and really going into that that dark space that we escape from and mm -hmm. I really don't want to go back to. Mm -hmm. That's a scary that's scary. I tell my clients, you know, whether they're coming to see me for the first time or if they were just talking on the phone for a consultation, it's like you want to find someone that you have a chemistry with that you really do feel safe with because yes. it's it's a lot of work it's a very vulnerable process it takes so much courage to do this work and you need to feel so cared for and so safe right and if it's not me that's okay find someone that you do feel that with and you know and, and that's the key well what you said if that's not me that's okay absolutely it's giving them it permission not have to it's be like me. just because you know yeah you were connected and you might like me and everything, you know, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I'm the right person for what you need. Exactly. You no. Know, and to, and to give the person that, that, that permission to say no is huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, it is so vital. And there's yeah. a lot of people out there. They're like, no, I'm going to keep you because I really want your money. Yeah. No, that's not me. See, yeah. and that's why we connect. Yeah, that's why we're like, damn, <laughs> instantly. <laughs> you know, people say, Gary knows who he's connecting with. <laughs> Gary's smart. <laughs> he's very intuitive. I love that. Yes, yes very much so. <laughs> so speaking of, you know, going through what you've gone through and being where you yes. are today. Yes. Would you be okay sharing a little bit of sure. your story on what, sure. you know, what yeah, qualifies of course. You other than college? <laughs> yeah. Other than lots of education. Um, you know, I mean, I, I grew up with, with gr a great mom and a great dad. They just weren't really great together. And, um, they eventually split up when I was a sophomore in high school mm -hmm. and I have two older brothers and they were both off in college. And so I was home alone during this time. And ironically, my dad had actually sat me down ahead of time and said, you know, we had this really just honest, vulnerable conversation where he shared with me that he was unhappy in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I basically gave him permission to leave. And I think that's what he needed because he was filled with guilt. And so he said to me in that conversation, wow, like you're amazing to talk to. You're so understanding. You'd be a great therapist one day. So I kind of locked that away in the back of my brain. See, like, yeah, I would. I would, <laughs> huh? So, but anyway then started a real um, spiraling down for me mm -hmm. because I was alone at home dealing with my parents splitting up. My mom got very, very depressed. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I really went off the rails at this point. And I was just talking to a friend of mine about this this last weekend. I was doing drugs. I was doing alcohol, but I was so high functioning. Like I knew how to get away with it. So I was very involved in dance. I was part of a dance company. We competed, we performed, and I was doing drugs before I went to dance class. And wow. I was, you know, leaving school in the middle of the day and getting high and coming back to school and still getting all my work done and still doing my homework and still doing all of that stuff. But I wasn't eating and I was partying a ton and losing a bunch of weight and just kind of just dealing with all my pain that way. Mm -hmm. and um it it got bad it was it was ugly and my my mom i mean you know we've talked about it i mean she was just in her own own grief at that time and i understand it but i was pretty neglected because i was definitely crying out for help and right. i was just think? left <laughs> I, think, I think i was sad and um and so i was just left to my own devices to kind of cope and try to manage this time and I was out of control. I was completely out of control, but yet so controlled because nobody knew that I was hurting. Mm -hmm. So I uh, took that kind of into college and, you know, studied a lot of psychology, obviously. And just, um, it really wasn't until I got to grad school that I really started to do my work. 
and I did find an amazing therapist in, in uh, Santa Monica and um, Gary Felton, if you're still working, I love you. <laughs> you're the best. Uh, but he was great. And, um, and I really started to dig into my, my behavior, my, you know, my starving myself and my partying habits and, and just being really hurt and really, uh, I just didn't know how to cope. I just had right. no idea how to cope with, with my pain. So that's kind of my story in a Reader's Digest version, um, but certainly learned so much in my own healing process. And that process, by the way, you know, it, it's ongoing. I'm still in it. Oh, I mean, it's never ending. It's never ending. It's we go, never ending. You know, I'm going through layers and layers and layers because certainly, you know, so much has happened in the last 30 years since I was doing my work. And so there've been lots of really great opportunities for me to do a lot more work since then. And that's why I'm always telling people, do your work, do your work. It's so great to do your work and to learn and to grow and to just, you know, experience. And, and it's vital. I mean, we can't ah. just sit. It's like, well, I want this, you know, it's what I talk with, with manifesting and law of attraction and everything. It's like, you mm -hmm, can't just mm -hmm. sit there and say, well, this is what I want. And then twiddle your thumbs. You no. have to take action. You have to yes. put in the work. Yes. Yes. yes it's yes. that simple. Yeah. yeah. No, so. absolutely. So, yeah. So there's been other, you know, traumas along the way. Um, there's been a couple very odd sexual assault mm. confrontations that were very odd. Um, had to work odd through is those. probably not the word I would use in that situation. Well, because it was odd. It was like I'm walking down the street and some guy like comes up behind me and does something and then runs off. It was like, I was like, what? You know, like it was just such an odd, horrible situation. So that's what I mean by odd. It was right. It was just so odd. Now I, now I get odd. You know, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it, now, yeah. now I would use odd too on that. Yes. Yeah. Just <laughs> it's just not in, in, initially the word that would come to mind. Yeah. So I guess I needed to clarify that. But uh, <laughs> so like stuff. Like it's like that. a run and by then, groping. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yes. Exactly. It's so weird. Um, and then um, certainly things in my marriage and like other things have happened and. Um, we belonged to a certain church here out in Colorado that ended up being um, just really unhealthy and really kind of what I would basically say cultish. Mm. And so that was very damaging and very hurtful. So been through just, you know, so much stuff over the last 30 years or 50, 50 years of my life. And um, so, yeah, just Let's always stick with 30 plus tax, yeah, 30 years. Yeah. Plus and, tax. and, and uh, I love that 30, 30 years plus tax. And just, you know, always finding whatever resources I need to heal, whether it's a therapist, a coach, I, I started Reiki. I mean, I just love it. I just love it so much. And that's what I want to promote for my clients and my friends and my family too. Like do whatever you need to do. Right. And I love that because we're not all equal. We're not all, mm -hmm. you know, we come from different backgrounds. We have different beliefs, you know. And something mm -hmm. that might work for you may not work for me. What works for me may not work for you. It might work for you, but it might not work for the person over there. You know, and, okay. and I tell people too, it's like, get as much information as you can and then pick and choose and make an, an informed decision. Right. It's Absolutely. like for us raising kids, you know, I mean, uh, we were married for five years before we had kids. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I never learned how to be a parent. I learned what not to do. Sure. You know? And my husband never really learned. And it's like, okay, ooh, help, you know? So what we did is we watched our friends and our families with kids, you know, we took bits and pieces. It's like, oh, this is cool. You know, put that in our back pocket and put that and da, 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 da. So when we had our own kids, I mean, we still plenty screwed them up, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> sorry, kids, love you. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, but we took from uh, bits and pieces from everything because, you know, well, some of the stuff that, that some of our friends and family did were like, oh my God, what are they thinking? Uh -huh. You know, but then there were other pieces were like, well, this is genius. You know, you know it is, parenting like, especially is pretty hit or miss. I mean, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have, to, I have to laugh. I love my husband. He's in school right now to become a teacher. 
and I tease oh, them. That's so great. Oh yeah, I tease them. I said, so what? Screwing up our kids wasn't enough. Now you go for the masses. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you know, I'm glad he's doing that because we need people like him. Aww, you know, that's so, so great. But I mean, yeah. it, it it really is is like talk to the person that you're looking to to work with, and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter in what area and what field. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, no, hey. absolutely. There's and so many thing, resources out here in the world. Right. Oh my gosh. And in our communities. Right. There's no excuse. Right. You know? Oh yeah. I know and I love Harry it. And it go ahead. Yeah. No, it's fine. No, but I love it. Like when, when I'm working with, with, with clients and everything and they're throwing something at me that they have heard somewhere, it might yeah. be new to me, you know, and I look and, and I might do like this, huh? Mm -hmm. It's like, let me think on that. Yeah. You know? But I never dismiss that just because it's coming from somebody else. Right. It's just unfamiliar to me. And now I make it familiar, no. you know, and sometimes I, and I look at them too. It's like, Hey, you know what? If it's working for you, by mm -hmm. all means, incorporate that. Absolutely. You we know, don't have all the answers. I, I mean, there's no, but we don't have all the answers. I mean, we, and, and we can learn a lot from our clients too. So, right. It's a very but, you mutual know, thing to admit that. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's like, and, and that, that's, that's like you guys watching, you know, when you have a therapist or a coach or something, you know, just for fun, because that's how I work. You know, just for fun, throw something in there that you may have picked up somewhere and present it to them. If they're telling you it's, it's hogwash or blah, 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 blah. And it's yeah. my way is the only way. Yeah. They may not be the right person for you. Right. Just saying. Right. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, have, I, have one per, I have one particular client. She always recommends the best books. I'm always like, okay, what are you reading now? You know, and she always recommends the best books. And I love that. Right. So yeah, I learned so much from my clients. It's oh, incredible. me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it's like, and it's never ending. No. It is. No. I mean, it's, it's, I just love, I love people. I just love yeah. people. They're yeah. fun. I can tell you do. I can tell you do. <laughs> <laughs> just, I may not like everybody, but I love everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny. I tell my husband, he says, ah, Shatsi, I always love you. And most of the time, I even like you. <laughs> like you. Yeah. And the first time I said that, he looks at me, he goes, what? Don't you like me all the time? I said, no. Do you like me? I mean, really like me all the time? He goes, yeah. Good point. And it's yeah. okay. It's okay. We're human. It's okay. Yes, of course. It's okay. That's why we communicate. <gasps> mm -hmm. Communication. Mm -hmm. <gasps> <laughs> the C word. Oh my Dude, God. There's two words like communication and ooh, the other one, responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, that's a good one. <laughs> no, that, that, is, that is so awesome. So how long have you been doing what you're doing? I've been in private practice for 15 years. Okay. But technically so, yeah, what going you've on been 16. doing, you've been doing it your whole life. Yeah. Off and on. Yeah. Whether yeah. you've and been learning yeah. or teaching. That's so or... true. Yeah. No, that's, that's actually a good point. Yeah. That's very yeah, true. Yeah, I have those every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I, and like I always tell people, even if I wasn't doing this, if I, would, if I didn't have a private practice, I would be doing something where I'm connecting to people and helping people and because that's who I am. I'm mm -hmm. not the private practice. I mean, that's not, the private practice is not who I am. It's just what I do right. because of who I am. Right. It's because of who I am that I do this. So if I, if for some reason this got taken away or I had to shut it down or whatever, I would still be doing this in another way somehow. So, you know, I that's just, who we are. that's who I am. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So before we, before we started recording, you were talking about, uh, you work a lot with veterans. Mm -hmm. So yes. they're my people. My husband retired out of the Aww. army after 30 and a half years. Oh, so and wow. We just celebrated our 30th anniversary. So wow. I've been with him well. for a minute. <laughs> yes you, so, you have and I and always, thank him I for loved, the service thank you yes and yes. I loved what you said because you said you work with the with the veterans and mm -hmm. their families yes and to me 
It's like you scored so many brownie points right there. I can't even tell you. Yeah. And it's not because I don't love the veterans. I love our veterans. They're amazing. I mean, I'm married to one, you know, the thing that, coming from, from the family, from the spouse side. Yes. You know, yes. nobody talks about us. I know. And we're an afterthought if we're lucky. And I all know. the programs you go to, it's like, oh, we do this for veterans. We do this for veterans. We do that for veterans. And I'm always asking, that's great. What are you doing for the spouses? What are you doing for the families? And a lot yeah. of times I hear they're welcome to come. Which not enough. Thank not you, enough. but it's by far yeah. not enough because even though yeah. some of our issues and, and what we deal with is the same, it is mm -hmm. also so different. No, it's so different. I'm sorry. It is just, it is, and unless you're living it, it's like so hard to even comprehend what it's like to be a family member of a, someone in the military. Right. Right. I mean, no, you're, I'm, I'm they're gone you. for years at a time, months, if not years at a time. And a lot of times when they're home, they're not there. Exactly. And then if they come home and there happens to be some trauma in there, I mean, now the person that's coming home isn't even the same person that you married, perhaps. No, they're not. Right? Um, there's so many layers, so mm -hmm. many layers for the families. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and, and being, being a spouse, being the mom, because we had the kids. You know, so absolutely. Now I mean, you're a being, single parent, but you're married. Right. Being the mom, being the dad, yeah. keeping it all together, and then right. still like maintaining everything, the happy home while the while while the service member is deployed, so they can focus right. one hundred percent on their job and not have to worry about right. home. Exactly. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. And then you know, it's like as so he was pressure. moving up in the ranks, he's enlisted, yep. he retired as a command sergeant major, you know. I mean, wow. my role has changed other right. than just being the, the, the wife and the mom. Mm -hmm. You know, now I'm the, a senior leader spouse. Now right. I have to care, take care, you know, I'm, I mean, not responsible, but responsible, you know, right. for, all the, no, there's for all the other spouses. There's absolutely expectation, right? Well, they're deployed yeah. and it's like, yeah, no, it's so much pressure. It, it's, it's insane. So much pressure. And we don't have an outlet. No. I mean, we have each other, but it's like, that's misery yes. loves company. So we're just running around in circles and there's really no solution. It just gets worse. I know. You know, because we're all worried about our husband. And then we feel guilty, you know, because, I mean, we had, unfortunately, we had some um, casualties, you know, mm. and then we feel guilty because the first thing, it's like, thank God it wasn't my husband. I know. So, and then but, we feel guilty, you know, I, know. I mean, especially as the senior spouse, now I have to go to that other spouse who lost her, her spouse. And try to provide comfort. And, and, and provide comfort. The whole time I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I don't even know what I would be doing. You know, I thank God I had never had to experience that. I know. You know, I mean, it's brutal. I know, I just got the chills. I know, I know. It's brutal. And, and it's like, yeah, thank goodness there's some other strong spouses out there and we were our support system, you know, so we can give to the spouses who were not that strong. Right. But again, it's like, it would be nice. I mean... I mean, here's the thing. I mean, so let's take our health insurance, the TRICARE, for instance. Yeah, yes, yes, The yes. service member, the active duty service member can get acupuncture. They can get chiropractic. We cannot. Right there. Well, you can't even get couples therapy. They don't even cover couples therapy. Right. right. So, I know. I know. <laughs> like, Again, that we're getting the short end of the stick. Right. How could they not cover couples therapy? I mean, that makes no sense whatsoever. Thank you. You know, I mean, I mean, yeah. they've come, oh my gosh, they have come a long, long And it long. is good insurance. It it's really, great insurance. Really is. Oh my gosh. But it it's is fantastic. Just, it's just, but it's still, it's, it's like, not, why is not, there's a lack of common sense? There's a right. lack of common sense with this. Well, here's the thing on common sense. Let me share that with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Common sense is me. a very rare flower that simply does not grow in everybody's garden. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, that that's... simple. But yeah, I mean, that, well, I think we, we see that every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we see but I mean, there's day. things it's like, why can they get chiropractic care, which yeah. is vital, which can yeah. prevent so many things yet. I can't. Acupuncture is phenomenal. Yeah. Why can I not get that? It, it's a great you question. Know? It's a so great my, my question. My thing is always like, what about the spouses? And I and remember the kids. when- And the kids, yeah. 
Right. And I remember like long time ago, I mean, we're married 30 years. So long yeah. time ago when we first got married, we got married in Germany. I, I born and raised over there. Uh -huh. And um, desert storm happened. We were married for like a uh, year and a half and desert storm yeah. happened. And I mean, I'm German. I'm like, I'm good. I can go. I have my friends. I have my family. I'm good. Yeah. And then I realized it's like some, some of the other, you know, spouses, they didn't. So I was helping them a lot, you know, like going to doctors and going to the stores, you wow. know, and being yeah. like the, the, the liaison. Type right. Person. You just kind of stepped into that role. Yeah. Right. You know, and we got together and stuff and now they have family readiness groups. And I mean, I've watched them from where they had nothing, you know, and then I helped build it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I was part of, of creating that, you know, that is amazing. And, yeah. And to see it now to, from where we were mm -hmm. and to have it now, it's like, guys, you don't know how good you have it. <laughs> and it's still not enough. It's never I enough. Know. It's not, because I, I mean, you know, for victims, it's never enough. I know. You know, and it's like, and, and that's what you work on and all of that, helping people get out of that victimhood to take their power back, you know, Absolutely. and, and get, become self-sufficient, become self-reliant because that is key. That is, well, key. I mean, and that's trauma, right? I mean, our, our, right. our control is completely stripped from us and mm -hmm. the, the need to get it back is what makes us so, you know, uh, hypervigilant and just on edge and, and right. all of that. And so, um, the process of healing is definitely like, so where do you have power? Where do you have control? Let's keep focusing and putting your energy into that right. and stop trying to get it where we can't, we can't, there's nothing you could possibly do that you're going to get control over here. So let's go over here where you can. Right. That's huge. It is huge. It's huge. And you know, a lot of times, yeah. and I mean, I've been there, I've done that. I'm guilty. I admit it. You know, when we all when we're miserable. We all have. When yeah. we're miserable, when we're stuck in this victimhood and we have that, that Poor me. control yeah. feeling, you know, we sink yeah. our teeth into stupid stuff mm -hmm. and blow that out of proportion because we feel we have control over that, which actually adds to the anxiety and the misery. But there's something that feels good about that, that, you know, right, that it does because it gives us me, that, 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 you know sense, I mean? of, that yeah. sense of control, you know, so we focus on the, on the, I call them the, the meaningless things that we feel like we can control instead of working on the big things within us. And that's painful. I get it. Been there, done that. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it's like, yeah. we have to dig deep and we have to yeah. really take ownership of the mm -hmm. feelings and emotions that we have, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, I'm not saying eat the whole elephant and you're not saying eat the whole elephant, take a bite, mm -mm. take a bite, exactly. take a bite, take exactly. a bite, but focus on that, put your energy in that and not in, in the, in the baloney in the, in the meaningless stuff. Even right. though it feels great in that moment, yay, I have control, yay, you know. Mm -hmm. But then it's more empty once that mm -hmm. moment passes. I mean, totally. to me, it was anyway. You know, I I felt more out of control and more lost. Well, and same deeper, with me. That's where in my yeah, misery was, than before. Absolutely, absolutely. It was. It it becomes a downward spiral. Right. 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 Yep. So, so I yeah. love, I love what you do. And I love, I really thank you, thank you. so much oh, thank for including you. the families and focusing Absolutely. on the families because Absolutely. we're casualties of war. Absolutely true. Oh yes. my gosh. Yes. You know, because I mean, the sacrifice the family has to make is priceless. I mean, absolutely. It's just, you. I mean, yeah. huge huge sacrifice that the whole family has to make mm -hmm. and you know and, and i look at it too it's like the kids mm -hmm. you know it's like how to explain it to the kids no and I, re I remember it was in was it 2003 when the whole iraq stuff you know hit the fan mm -hmm. down there and mm -hmm. uh jeff was deployed my kids were little i mean they were, they were you know yeah first first and fourth grade i think i mean little you yeah, know, to them war is well. The dad is a soldier. He's at war. He's dead because in war people die. People die, right? People die, and I did not have to live with that anxiety that. every day, right? But here's the thing: it's like I wasn't aware because I mean I was dealing with my own stuff at that time. You know, husband was deployed. I was scared because nobody knew what was going to happen. You know, mm -hmm. and then I have the little kids at home, two boys, 
And it's like, wow. And I remember one morning I'm in the bathroom and my younger son comes in and <laughs> I love him, Patrick. He's, I love, I love my kids. So he comes in and he's like, Pokemon, 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 Pokemon. What happens if, if daddy dies? I don't know. What happens if something happens to you? Oh, oh my God. What a bombshell. I mean, in the middle of Pokemon, I'm, I'm still like Pokemon. And he goes like, what happens if something happens to you? And I'm going, well, <sighs> if something happens to me, dad will come home. They will send him home, you know, to take care of me and you and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he looks at me and he goes, yeah, but he's in war. He's dead. I mean, not like, well, he could potentially, I mean, he's in first grade, six years old, you know. I mean, it was a matter of fact, but he's dead. He's in war. He's dead. And I'm sitting there going, oh, crap. Wow. And I wow. was like, okay, first of all, no, he's not dead. He's not going to die because he's way too yeah. stubborn for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then I looked at him and I said, and if something happens to both dad and I, you know, we have a will and this is what's going to happen and blah, 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 blah. And, and, and it's okay. It'll be okay. Yeah. And he goes, oh, Pokemon, 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 Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, is that not a six-year-old brain? Like that just that's amazing, isn't it? Right? I, I was wow. sitting there and I was so, so concrete. So concrete. Yeah, so concrete black and white. matter of fact, yeah. like bam. Yeah. And yeah, Pokemon. <laughs> Ooh, that's that's heavy. That's tough. Right. That that was like that and was. And you're not trained. Brain. You're not trained. You're not equipped with how how do we talk to the kids? No. What like, how do we, you know, the reality is daddy could die or mommy could die or brother or sister, like any, yes, that right. is the reality. That is reality. But here's the thing. How too. do we live with that every single day? <sighs> Not fun. Not fun. But yeah, wow. to me, that was such an eye opener. And it's like, from yeah. then on, I just really approached my, wow. with my kids in a totally different way. You know, yeah. before I was hiding when I was scared and I was crying. After that yeah. moment, I'm like, no, I did it with my you kids. You just, you just show, yes. I did it wow, with my that's kids. Powerful. I was scared with yeah. my kids because I knew, now I knew, yeah. I understood. It's like in the way they're scared too, you know, and my older son, he's, he internalizes everything. He just keeps it in and he's like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to worry you. I'm like, dude, I worry more if you don't share with me. Right. Exactly. You know, exactly. But I mean, it's like. But you normalized it for them. Like when you started to show right. your own, your own it, normal right, emotion. Okay and we'll be okay. It's okay. And right. right. Exactly. Yeah. Until. Uh-oh. No. Until. <laughs> until. And see, so when my husband was deployed, we said, we're not going to do, I'm not going to be a slave to the phone, hoping for a phone call. Right. And I, guys, any of you spouses out there with deployed family members, don't do that. Pick a day of right. the week. And make that your day. For us, right. it was Sunday morning, our time. Not his right. time, our time. Right. Okay. That's smart. So Every smart. Sunday morning, because I knew we would be home. There's a good chance the kids will be home. He can talk with all of us, you know, yes. and that gives us something to look forward to. And especially Absolutely. Sundays where everybody, if everybody is with their families, they're with themselves. Yes. That's the loneliest day of the week during the yes. province. Sunday yes. is the worst day. So have something to look forward to. And then it's like, oh, by the way, another week down. That's right. And that's how that's we look right. at it. That's brilliant. I love that. And that made a, a really, huge yeah. So, And until. <laughs> until. Dun, dun, dun. Until. So I'm home, you know, I'm home one night and my phone rings. And uh -huh. caller ID, it's a stateside phone number. So oh. It's a stateside number. And I'm like. Who's calling me from the States? Curious, because we're in Germany, right? So I answered the phone. Oh. Go, Hello. He goes, hi. And so my given name is Sabine. At that point, I still went by Sabine. He goes, Sabine? I'm like, um, and I did not recognize the voice. I mean, didn't recognize huh. the number. So that was really creepy because I just answered with hello. Yeah. And Sabine, and I'm like, who are you? Yeah. He goes, no, this is your husband. 
I'm like, oh, hey, husband. This is like, pfft. and I'm thinking, wait a minute, he's calling me in the middle of the week at night. Uh, what the fire truck? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Hi, husband. Are you okay? He goes, well, this is my official phone call. I'm like, official phone call. What does that call, mean? Right? Did he get arrested? <laughs> well, he was deployed. I know, but like, you right. know, one and phone I'm going, call, what right? do you like, mean? You're, and I'm like, like yeah. totally, pfft, you know. What do you mean your official phone call? He goes, well, you know, when we notify our next of kin. Come again, what? He says, yeah, I got blown up. Oh, no. And my heart sank. But he was making jokes about it. So it wasn't really like, it didn't sink in. Yeah. You know, because he was able to talk to me. He was making jokes yeah. about it. And I'm like, okay. What the hell? What happened? And yeah, he told what him, happened? him and his soldier he, were running on, on, on base in Ramadi and an RPG came in over the, the fence and hit a corner of a building. I think if I remember right and shrapnel just went everywhere. And my husband threw himself over his soldier. Oh my God. So, um, oh yeah. Oh my God. <gasps> so he's, he's got shrapnel. When we go through airports, it's fun with all the metal in me and his shrapnel, we set it all off. <laughs> Oh my god! But um, oh I was gosh. like, oh my gosh! Oh, and that's then he comes so home. frightening. Right, he comes home and he has a scar. Like I, I forgot which side, but like right here. And if it would have been like a millimeter or two deeper, it would have been his main artery. He had a piece of shrapnel that went right in there. I know, but it didn't really sink in. I hung up the phone, and I told the kids, you know, because I told them, I said, hey. You'll be the first one to find out. And if I have to wake you up, I will wake you up. I promise you that. Yeah. So, and they were still awake, you know, and I was like, okay, guys. So I just, that was dad on the phone. He's like, oh, why didn't we get to talk? I'm like, well, because he was injured. He got blown up. I mean, I don't think I said blown up because my kids. That would scare them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not, but not only that, but they're my kids and we're morbid. We have a morbid sense of humor. <laughs> Yeah. So I said, so dad, maybe not the time or place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dad, dad got, dad got injured and that was his phone call. He is okay. He got lucky. He was very lucky. Wow. You wow. Know? Um, so he, he was okay. And they're like, and for them, they heard dad is okay. They're like, oh, okay. Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon. Right. Right. You know, it did not sink in with me until the following day because so I was the translator for our battalion. So whenever, because we, you know, we had, we had a, a, a Spanish translator for our Spanish, Hispanic spouses, you know, for our, I was the one for the, for the German spouses and stuff. So whenever the official notification comes through after all the next of kin have been notified and everything, you know, we put it out to the company first to go oh. through that family support group, you know, let everybody know, Hey, it's okay. Sure. These people, blah, blah, blah. And then it goes out to the rest of the company, to the, to the rest okay. of the battalion. So I right. translated that. Okay. That's when it hit me. Oh. When I put down his name under the casualties. Ooh, just got the chills again. Wow. That's when it hit me. That's when I broke down. And I called my girlfriend who was our uh, uh, liaison, you know, for, for the FRG. And, and I'm still going like <laughs> doing this. And she goes, you just put his name down, didn't you? I said, yeah, and it just hit me. She goes, me too, because her husband was the soldier my husband threw himself on. It didn't wow. hit her until she had to write down the official memo. Until she oh put her husband's name down. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's that whole thing. And then, of course, we have to deal with the panic that comes from the spouses. Right. You know, so we're sitting right. here. We're like, oh, my God, we got so lucky because the last yes. memo we had to do there were actually deaths. Right. You know, and the next memo we get, there's a good chance there will be deaths. Of course, every time, of course. You know, so that it's, it's insane. It's insane. But to, to have, it would have been nice to have somebody. I mean, now they have like, um, I forgot what they're called, but they actually have psychologists available now. Yes, yes. You know, but yes. unfortunately, it's not consistent either. They change out every so many months. Exactly. Which, you know, I'm glad we have the service now, but we didn't have it at that time. Right. 
you know so right. I mean, it, it would I'm, I'm i'm so grateful they are there now yeah of and course I wish, and i wish more people would take advantage of them so guys your unit find out who they are there's help out there you don't have to yeah. do this alone you're I not know. alone no never no never no. there's resources out there yeah you know and, and, and it's so just, hard it's so is, hard it's, it's crazy and I so mean, isolating I yeah he, he, he retired three years ago and i miss zero right <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you do but here's the other thing too so he retired november uh november first three years ago was his first day as mr he's the mr <laughs> He's That's a man. whole nother adjustment and transition well, right there, right? right? Well, there's that. So he worked for the first six months and then he walked away and he, he said, honey, I have to go sabbatical. I have to just totally decompress, leave it all behind yes. and not yes. go from this to the next, to the next, to the next. He says, I have it's a to clean, just... clean cut. Yeah. Right. And he's a, yeah. he's a super introvert, you know, yeah. that's his way yeah. of dealing with it. But sure. it took him um two years year and a half two years to really adjust to adjust yes well, well it's a huge transition so he's been in school for a year now so yeah i mean it took him a, a while to adjust. I mean, it's a huge 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 transition it's huge. huge but he had to because i mean he retired as a command sergeant major when he was a first sergeant one of his soldiers was killed on his watch oh so lots of trauma there too right Gosh. i mean a bunch got injured yeah you know yeah. i mean yeah. having that yeah. responsibility for other people because they i mean they were his kids absolutely they are his kids they are his responsibility and it's like you know yeah they always came before us which sucks mm -hmm. but that's just the way it was you right. know right but they were his family they were his responsibility and now mm -hmm. not to have that and it's like understanding mm -hmm. to to really let all of that go Mm -hmm. and, and that took him time it took him what two years or however long it took him yeah you know and now he's back to the guy that i met when i when i first fell in wow. love wow well that's that's amazing and exciting right right you know but i mean it's like and, and everybody deals with it differently yeah you know and it's like he he's like you are all i need i'm like honey that's great but i don't know about that <laughs> well, but, and it, your, obviously your love and understanding and support has been so important in that yeah. process. And for, again, a lot of spouses, it's hard to walk through all these different things that you're talking about. It is. And to it's stick tough. in there. I mean, that's really, really tough. It is, it is super tough. You know, not everybody yeah. is built for that. Right. You know, and, and I wish there wouldn't I mean, there's still a stigma attached, you know, go see, go get help, see a shrink, see a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever. You know what? Who cares? If it makes you feel better, go do it. Mm -hmm. It's about you. It's, it, you know, and it's like, I love there's people like you out there who, who get it, who are there for our military and not yeah. just, again, yeah. not just for the veterans, but right. for the spouses and for the families as a whole. Absolutely. It's crucial. Absolutely. It's like... Yeah. If, we're, if you weren't so far away, I mean, I'm hugging you right now. Oh. <laughs> like, no, because Cyber it makes hug. my heart sing. Yeah. It really makes my heart um, sing. Yeah. You know, because it, it is so important. It, it is. is really important. It's, the it's, whole it's some of the most, re it's some of the most rewarding work that I've ever done. I have nice. to say. Yeah. Nice. Because I'm thinking, yeah. you know, because my wheels are always going, it's like, hmm, I need to connect you with a few people here. Okay. But they, of course, it. are all here in Colorado Springs, so I don't I know, know. You know how know. that would go. But yeah. I think there'd be good resources like um, the Mount Carmel Veterans Center. Oh, okay. Oh, see, here in Colorado Springs. And recently, I just connected with the uh, Veterans Trauma Court. Well, maybe I could speak or something, or maybe I could lend something to them, to those organizations, you know? You know, I something. mean, there's... Offer something, yeah. Right. Plus, I mean, here in, in the Springs, we have such a huge military oh, absolutely. community. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and I'm not just talking active duty with the Air Force base and the the, mili the Army base and everything. I mean, this is a huge retirement community. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, what better place to retire than... Oh, <laughs> you know, so um, now I, yes. I, I'll, I'll connect you because it's important. Thanks, I love Amy. connecting I appreciate people. that. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So, I really do. No, I wow, I'm, what I'm a so story. I love your connected. story. Thank you so much for sharing all that. You're welcome. I mean, it, it's important to hear for people, you know, because Absolutely. it's like I, I have people, I mean, civilian friends and family members that are like, I could never do what you do. And I laugh right. and I'm like, I didn't think I could do it, but right. I fell in love with my guy. Yeah. And I just do. And they're like, how do you do it? How do you do it? How did you do it? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the secret, guys. One day at a time, sometimes just a moment at a time. Yeah. That's the secret. I wasn't worried. I mean, yes, I was worried, but I didn't let it get in my way about yeah. tomorrow next week you know right. whatever it's like right now right but let me focus on right now let me get to the, through today that's, again that's the only moment you can control is what this right. moment right now yep and i told my spouses too they when you know when they're like so frustrated and sad that they're they didn't get a phone call and then they go to the store because eventually they have to go to the store and that's when they call oh, and then they yeah. beat themselves up no like, you can't live like that no yeah. don't do that yeah. Yeah. It's like one day at a time, one moment at a time, you know, and it's like, yeah. Yeah. if you're, and here's the thing, the other thing I learned too, I found out when I was okay, my kids were okay. Well, yeah. If I wasn't okay, they weren't okay. They were look. they're looking to you. Yeah. Like, like that, you know, that monkey see monkey do. Well, but they're, you're their gauge. Like, are we okay? Or are we not okay? Right. Like that, you know, I mean, that you're the gauge, right? So. Right. And the, and the key really sure. is, is like, you're not alone. Right. I mean, there's so many resources available now on, on the basis of, through the companies, through the units, through the battalions, you know, yeah, and reach yeah. out and it's okay. Right. Just like, Hey, you know what? I'm having a really hard time. I need I'm help. Struggling. Right. Absolutely. I need help. Yes. The most powerful yes. phrase you can ever utter is I need, I need help. help. That's so true. You That's have permission so to ask for help. Yep. This is it right here. Ask for help. Yeah. Don't be afraid to yeah. ask for help. And you know what? So what if people look at you like, ah, oh, well, she had to go see a psychiatrist, da, 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 da. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? We got to get past the shame, right? It's because... the shame and the fear of judgment. And that gets right. in the way of the healing. Right. But yes. the people that judge are the ones that need help as well, but they're afraid their fear of reaching out is even bigger than yours. Right. I know. So, I mean, it's just, I'm just so grateful. There's, you are there and there's people like you to really take care of our veterans and the families. Yes. And the families. Because it's the whole package. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember the old days, you know, with the military. If the military would have wanted you to have a family, they would have issued you one. Oh my gosh. They have come a long way. <laughs> that's terrible. Oh. But that's how it used to be. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> If they've, they've come oh, a long way. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I know. They've come a long way. Yes, so, but anyway, yes. Leslie, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Being thank on here. you for having me. Thank you for having it, me. It's been so anytime, much fun. Anytime you want to come back. I already have repeat offenders. So I'm like, okay. I'm open. I'd love to be a repeat offender. <laughs> That'd be fabulous. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean I'm a repeat offender? I'm like, well, you asked to come back on the show. You've been back on the show. Now you're a repeat offender. He says, I, I love it. That. I love it. <laughs> That's so great. That's well, awesome. I love what you do. And I love that you're just spreading happiness. Oh, thank and you. You. Just, ex you just exude it and it's contagious. So uh, I appreciate that. Thanks. So thanks for having me. This was so much fun. Anytime. I love, I love having people on the show that help me spread the message you know, and a part of a yeah. bigger picture and, and a part of raising those vibrations and part of mm -hmm. letting people know they're not alone, letting people know there's hope out there. You know, Absolutely. It's like, it, it takes a village. It does. It takes a village. And I'm glad it you're does. part of the village. Me or too. My tribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you, Leslie. I appreciate Thank you, you so much. I and hey, you guys you watching. Well. Hmm? I said, I appreciate you as well. <laughs> and for you guys watching, if you have not gone to giftfrombeanie.com yet, please go get your uh, quick guide to happiness. Gets you started in the right direction. It may or may not. It's up to you, you know, but it's there. So, and thank you for tuning in. And until next time, as always, be happy, be kind, be love. See you then. Bye. Hi.